Welcome back to the Easy Design 4 video tutorial and now we're going to continue and uh, we left you at labels and now we're going to click on the next one called custom objects. Custom objects is a group of features which allows you to build your own objects in Easy Design 4 and there are as you see quite a few different ones but they work very much similar all of them and we're going to first start to look at the one called floor. Now, as you know, you can create standard floors like we did here in our previous video. And but sometimes you want to make some special floors and you have an option here. So I'm going to click on floor. Then I go out into my layout and wherever I'm standing, I can left mouse click. And then I drag out a line like this and I can continue and add as many as I want just like this and when I close it up you see it becomes green and I click and then we see a green area here which is active and if I click inside of it it brings up menu here with altitude but also something called smoothness and if I drag that along around we are able to create a smooth curved floor really cool like this any shape that I would like to have and I can add my own material or color from the scheme right here. So maybe do a color and click use and we see it right there. Now this is a kind of a funky floor, but just to give you an example on how you can use that. Especially used a lot with gym floors, of course. But it's pretty nice. And then we'll remove that one. So I'm going to click delete. I'll show you what it's called wall poster. We've, we've gone through how you can add an image to an entire wall, but sometimes you just want that wall poster, maybe a customer's logo type or some presentation posters that you have. So we're gonna click on wall poster. Then I go out here, hold down my left mouse button and drag out a red line like this. And I get a menu here, the object menu, where I can change the dimensions afterwards. Maybe I want this to be five meters, height, fine, altitude, maybe one meter. And then I can add a material. So let's add uh, any material, but I'm gonna add a custom material. I'm gonna add the Easy Design transparent logo, but you can use JPEG images. I'm gonna use a PNG for this one and click use. Then I'm finally gonna align it on my wall like that. And if we go into 3D, you'll see that we have a PNG image on that wall right there. So that's how easy it is to add posters or special images on the wall. And if you use PNG tech images, it becomes transparent background like this. Really cool. Okay. Same thing for floor image. So if I select floor image, drag out a box like this, then I'm able, if I want, I can change the dimensions for it. Maybe just do maybe do six meters in width and one meter in depth. Altitude, I'll leave it zero. Then I select material, all. Let's do custom again. We'll place that easy design logo on the floor. Comes out like that, but you see I need to tweak it a little bit. So we're gonna flip the other way, one meter and six, or maybe two meters. So you just test it until you feel that it looks good. And we'll have a look from top view so you can see that right there, right on the floor there. So it's pretty cool, as you can see. Great. We'll remove those two, or that one at least. Or actually, let's do this one too. Now mirror, same thing as wall poster. Drag it out, but this is a mirror. And you can change the dimensions, of course, but we're just gonna walk into 3D. And what you will notice is that it has no reflections at the moment. It's a fake mirror, so to say. But when you create your camera image, it's gonna add a real reflection to your end final image there. So that's really nice too. So that's mirror. We can remove that one as well. And we'll do cylinder, cylinder and box. I use a lot for columns, perhaps, but you can create your own custom objects. And of course you can group several of these custom objects together, like two or three boxes to create a simple object. 
but I'm just going to show you how I create a pillar. Let's create a pillar. Let's do it at 0.3 for both width and depth. And I'm going to make this one five meters high or actually four meters high. And you can add an image to each individual side or use the same image or color on all the sides. We'll do this color and go into 3D again. And you see that we place the pillar in the room. So that's pretty cool. Right there. And if we close, since you have the duplicator tool, which is nice when you do uh, columns like this, is that you can set a distance that you want to copy it, maybe four meters, and click on the right arrow, and you get a column four meters. And if I click down, we'll add another one. So you can set them by exact distances from each other. I'm going to make a lasso around them and press delete key. So you can group and delete, of course. Next one I'll show you is stairs, and they work like this. Let's drag out a stair over here, and we'll rotate it like this. And you have an arrow showing the direction. We can change the dimensions, of course, right here. And if I want to have a, a stairs leading up, I can set a negative value. And I'm going to type in negative 2.1 because 2.1 is my height as well. And I can, of course, select the color if I would like to do that from material menu. But I'm fine like that. And we'll go into 3D. And if we look from above, Right here, you see the stairs coming up because I set a negative value. So it started negative, moving upwards. So that was stairs. And then we have something called path. And it's this one right here. Path allows you to create a custom path, like a rubber floor, if you would like. And you just click, 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 click as many times as you want. And double click to let go. You can grab a hold of each of these afterwards if you would like to create any shape that you want. You can change the width of it. So maybe I want just 0 0.4 and it becomes nar more narrow or 0 0.8 wider. We'll leave it at seven decimeters. And then of course you can add a material and you can add any material or color. Do another color. And if we walk into 3D, you'll see that very funky looking path there, but just to show you what how it works. So for floors, you have a lot of different options here. You can use the standard floor that's created when you close a room. Uh, you can also use the custom floor and you can use the path that I'm showing you right now. And of course, if you click on it and then delete, it goes away. Now we'll move on to the next tab called cameras and cameras. Well, I think you can guess what it is. You click create camera over here and another camera comes out. This one is called camera one and I can move it any position like this. But when it's active, you see the camera menu here. I can select the name, maybe uh, side view, any name. I can decide that I want my 3D to start from this camera. Same thing if I was to click on camera zero, I could do a change there as well. We'll call this side view two. And when we go to 3D, we'll start from the side view one right here. But I have a play button up here, select camera button. If I click on it, we see the two cameras that I have. And if I click side view two, it jumps to that point or back again. If you want, you can position a camera like this and lock it as a set camera. That means now we have a new camera position saved. So if we jump it in between the cameras, it remembers that position. So that's also a very nice tool. We'll close that. We're going fast and easy forward here. Now we're going to click on measuring tab and measuring is also what it sounds like. It allows you to create a distance we're going to use it like a tape ruler and it's really nice. You click on create measuring, then you click wherever you would like to start to measure, click and move to any direction and click again. And if you want, you can grab a hold of the end of it 
and change the length of it or rotation. And you can have as many as you want. You just click and drag. So these create distances. And when I showed you the print preview, if we click on print, it said hide measurements here. So if I click on that, those are hidden. So you have the option of just having them while you're doing your planning. Okay, we're not going to print, so we're going to click close. And we'll actually click on them and delete them like that. And now we're going to go to and move the camera a little bit. The final tab is called My Objects. And My Objects is a feature we had in Easy Design 3 as well, and we really like it but we improved it quite a lot. Basically what it is, you make a, when you're in the My Objects tab, you can make a lasso around objects. Let's make a lasso around these treadmills, like that. Then Save as My Object button lights up and I can click on it. And then we can set, select the name, seven treads, for example. And then I click OK. And it creates a thumbnail of that group. So now, if I want, if we remove these, delete, I can actually drag them out again. And that would be for my next project and next project. So it's a great way of creating groups that you can reuse. Maybe you've done a circuit training if you're into fitness or if you have a number of car lifts, you can group them together as a group. Uh, but the group is not fixed. So you can actually change it afterwards. So what you do is you click on it and then the group button is shown here. It's blue and I'm going to unmark that. So now they're all individual objects again and I can make a change to them. That was the second video uh, in our tutorial. We're going to do more videos so please uh, keep watching and look at the next video. Thank you very much.